Hello, Year 7. Okay, so this week's work is on light. Okay, and I've got a word written here. I want you to think about what it says and why might it be written backwards. And there's a clue here. Okay, so pause the view, have a think. What, what does it say and why might it be written backwards? Okay, so you've had a think. Like 30 seconds, 60 seconds. You've had a think about what it says and why might it be written backwards. It says ambulance. Okay, and this is what is written on the front of ambulances. Here's a picture of one. Okay, now at the top of it, it's got it written normally, and the bottom has got it written. It's got it written backwards. So why might it be written backwards? When I'm driving in front of this ambulance and it wants to overtake me, and I look in my rear view mirror, I look in the mirror, and I see this. I don't see this picture. This isn't what I see. I see this. I see it flipped. I see it back to front. So that top word that was the right way around here is now backwards. I won't be able to read that. But the bottom one is clear and I can see what that says. Okay. So when I'm looking in a mirror at things behind me, okay, it's flipped. Those words don't make sense anymore. Okay. Unless they write it backwards on purpose. Okay. So that's one of the reasons why it's important that you understand about reflection, about how light behaves in different situations. Now, last week you were looking at writing methods. And you did some fantastic work on helping me be able to make a proper cup of tea. Okay, um, just a couple of examples of really nice work. Really clear detailed instructions. We've got some uh, measurements here, which is very good. What I really like about this one is the annotations around the diagrams. It's really nice. I've got like a nice little picture of the scientists. Um, here again, you've got you've got you've got information around the diagram. So you're describing what's happening in the pictures, which is very good. Um, some really detailed instructions here. This is a fantastic method. This is probably, I, this is, I think, the clearest of the methods that I've seen so far. Um, here, another good example where we've got the measurements within that method. It's really, really good practice. That's what you definitely have to have in your methods. So that's fantastic. Okay, so well done for all those methods that were uploaded. So this week, as I say, we're looking at reflection. Okay, we want to know how rays can be reflected and refracted. Okay, so normally when we do this in school, we'd set this up and we'd give you ray boxes and you'd get to, to use ray boxes and mirrors. And some of you might have done a little bit of work using those things, but we're not going to be able to do that this week because you're at home and you don't have access to ray boxes. So the best way I think that we can get a bit of a go is to use a simulation. Now, there's a program called, there's a website called FET that's with fantastic simulations. Um, that you can use to investigate it. Okay, so what you're going to be doing, what your task is going to be, is to be is to prove the law of reflection. Okay, you're going to go to this website. It will be in the class charts. I'm going to show you in a second. And you're going to need to fill out a table like this. So you're going to need to draw a little table, um, two columns. Okay, and one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So you want five, six uh, uh, data points. And you're going to be measuring the angle of incidence. So you're going to have light coming into a surface, into the mirror. And you're going to be measuring the angle of reflection. Okay, the angle that it hits and the angle that it reflects at. And you're going to be writing those down and then you're going to be changing the angle. Okay, so you'll need to go to FET. Now you can use a laptop to do it. You can use a computer, you can use a tablet, you can use a phone. It's a little bit tricksy on a phone. It's a little bit fiddly because it's the, the screen can be quite small and... You're more dexterous than me, you'll be able to do it better, but I think it's a little bit trickier on our phone, but you can do it. So you're going to need to record your results, you're going to need to draw a diagram, and then you're going to have to explain what's actually happened. So I'm going to go, I'm going to pause my video here and just go to and load up the website. Okay, so this is the website. So once you get to Bending Light, okay, on FET, this is what you should see. You should see the little five at the bottom of the, um, the simulation picture. Okay, that's the right one. Um, you can just Google PHET and bending light and it should get you to this page. Okay, but there will be a link in class charts. So you click on that and it will load up the simulation. And there's there's three little features okay, that you can use. You can use intro, prisms and more tools. The first thing we want to look at is intro. Okay, and we're brought to this screen and you saw the picture of, of this on the last thing. Now, before, by all means, have a play with all the different bits. Okay, but when you're taking the results, you want to set it like this. So the top box is air and the bottom box is water. Okay, and this is the laser. You can click it by turning it on. And if you click and hold, you can drag it and change what angle it's going in at. 
okay now for the first job we're only really looking in the white section at the top okay because this is this is light coming out of this laser it hits the surface of the water some of it's going to go straight through and some of it is reflected okay and when we change the angle we can see that sometimes it reflects more light and the the, the, the reflected laser is brighter and some of it's a bit less okay but we can change that angle and that's what we want to do because then we're going to take the measuring um, angular the measuring angular the angle measurer okay you click and drag that and with that little tick in the middle of it you want to line that tick up as close as possible to the dashed line here and you don't want to put up here you don't want to put it down here you want to put it as close as possible to where that light is hitting the water so you want to line it up really close to that little bit there i think that might be a touch high that's better and then we can use these these numbers here to measure those angles okay now if i was doing it to make it a little bit easier to measure them i try and pick angles that's easy to measure okay so i'd look at I'd look on these ticks here and these these big lines are 10 degrees and the little lines are five degrees and the tiny lines are one degree okay so if i put it here on that first big line that's 10 degrees so in that first column of your results the angle of incidence it will be at 10 okay and then i can measure on the other side it's gone so that's the first big line here or i can little count them the little tiny lines one two three four five six seven eight nine ten or five ten or just go in the big lines ten as my angle of reflection so i put ten and ten in that top row okay and then you can change it and we can change it to let's change it to this one okay now i've jumped ahead I'd go up in maybe steps of 10, it'd be easy to do. Okay, but just to, step, just to, to, to show you what it would, how I'd calculate that, how, how I'd find out what the angle is. So I'd see, right, I'd look, I'm looking for the, um, for the big line. So it, that's 10, that will be 20. This will be 30, and it's written on there for me, 30. The next big line will be 40. So my angle is somewhere between 30 and 40. And if I look carefully, it's right on top of that, um, that slightly smaller line so that's a five so that'd be 35 so this was this angle would be 35 for my angle of incidence and then the other side we can do it again so i go 10 for that line oops i moved it don't do that 10 20 30 and then one two three four five okay now it might be easier, especially from a phone to stick with the big lines it'll be easier to see so you're going to take those numbers and you're going to write it into your table. And when you've done that, then you can have maybe have a little bit of a play. But we are going to be using this again in uh, the, uh, a later part of the video. OK, I'm going to pause this and go back to the PowerPoint. OK, so here's again, this is what we're measuring and this is where you would put in those results. OK, so then we need to think about, OK, so what does that show us? You need to write a sentence going to be describing how that angle of incidence is related to the angle of reflection how are they linked what's special about them okay and that's really the first proper task you want to be uploading a picture um like a screenshot or and um, the actual document you put it in if you're using a computer but a, a, a picture on your phone of, of your actual work showing the angles of incidence and reflection that you record and you measured using FET you want a diagram showing what's happening so you can draw it like this or you can draw it like on FET has or you can take a screenshot using the FET thing if you can do that and you want to have a sentence describing that relationship, that rule between angle of incidence and angle of reflection. You should notice something interesting about those numbers. Okay, you should notice something. So, that's reflection. The next thing we're going to be looking at is refraction. After we've done this, I've forgotten this slide. So, there's two types of reflection. So, the normal type of reflection that you would normally deal with in Key Stage 3 is when you're looking at a mirror and you see that it hits the mirror and it bounces off a really controlled way and it's really easy to to predict where that light is going to go because it follows that rule that you've just written about but you can also get something called diffuse reflection and that's where the light will come in and it gets scattered at lots and lots of different angles so if you've got a piece of paper in front of you light's hitting that from your light okay your lamp and it's coming off all all sorts of different angles it's not coming off in one direction 
Okay, so smooth and shiny surfaces will give you specular reflections, like on a mirror, and then the rougher surfaces, like paper, okay, they will reflect light at all different angles, all different directions. Okay, so now we're looking at um, refraction. Okay, so the speed of light depends on the material that light's going through. So light will change speed, will get slower, if it goes through different materials. Okay, and when it enters a material, so for instance, if it goes from air to glass, it will slow down. So it's going faster here and slower here. And because of that, it changes direction a little bit. It bends. Okay, it changes direction. The speed of light is affected by the density of the material it's traveling through and some other things you don't need to know about. Um, and when it enters from a less dense to a more dense material, it will slow down or bend towards that red line. Okay, called the normal line. Okay, now you can investigate refraction using the FET simulation as well. So I'm going to go back to the FET simulation. So when we first use the FET simulation, we were just looking at the top section, the white section here, where we can look at reflection. Now we can look at refraction at the bottom side. So we've got light traveling quite fast here then it slows down as it enters the water. Now you can have a look at what happens to the angles when you can change the density, so we can make it more dense by increasing this number. And we can look at that, that angle get smaller, it's bent further. It changes it by a bigger amount in terms of its direction. Okay, so we can have a look at that. Okay, the other way to look at refraction um, will be to look into the prism section where we can look at different objects. So here we can move around where the laser is and we can change its angle as well. Okay, and we can use different shapes. So we can look at um, we can look at a triangle, so a, a, a triangular prism, and we can look at how the prism causes the light to change direction. It should be going straight across, but because this is of a much bigger density, it gets deflected. Okay, it changes direction here. Okay, and changing the angle that it hits the, the prism can change and change which direction it gets to in the end. Okay. Um, so have a play with this. Have a look at um, how you can change the amount of refraction using, using that FET simulation. One of the biggest um, or one of the most popular uses of refraction is the archer fish. Now we're going to attach a couple of links to some wonderful videos showing how archer fish, archer fish work in the, in the real world. There's a brilliant documentary by David Attenborough that features them. Um, the archer fish, it will be swimming under the water. It's a fish. And because the light, okay, changes direction, so this is the fly, the light comes from the fly, it hits the water, and then is refracted, so it changes direction. So, so the, when the fish looks up, okay, it thinks that the fly is here. It can see that's what the, that's where the position of that fly would be to the archer fish. It would be wrong. Okay, the archer fish um, has evolved the skill in figuring out that. Okay, so if it appears, if it appears as if the fly is here, then the archer fish will taking a big gulp of water and spit it out at the fly. It will hit the fly and it will cause it to, to fall out of the um, the sky or the leaf that it's resting on, go into the water and the archfish can gobble it up. Okay, it doesn't aim where the apparent position of the, of the fly is, but it aims where it really is. It's an incredible animal. Which brings us to our, third, our second task. Your second task, you need to draw a diagram that shows refraction. It's got to have labels. Okay, it could be showing how an archfish catches its prey. It could be just a simple block showing the refraction like I've got here. It could be a drawing or it could be a screenshot using the FET simulation. Okay, but it needs to have labels. So it needs to have the incident ray. It needs to show where the refraction takes place. Okay, um, any kind of creative situation that you can think of that shows refraction will be good. Okay, these three examples that would be good to use. So that's your second task. Now I said at the beginning that there's like a bonus task, an extension, and you've got three options. Okay, you can do them all three if you want, but I'd maybe only do one of them. Okay, so your first option, you can look at the uh, some video I made a while ago, um, how to use a glass of water to make a lens. 
Okay, so you're going to be writing a word backwards or drawing a picture backwards, and you're going to be using a glass of water to flip it the right way around using this lens. Okay, and there's a video that's attached in class chat at the bottom that would take you to what to do in this little extension. Another option would be to make a rainbow using FET. Okay, to take a picture of, use FET to, to make a rainbow. Now, when you're using FET, instead of using just the red laser light, you need to click on the white light button so you get all the different colors. Okay, um, you'll also probably want to have reflections clicked on. Now, you can use different shapes, you can use a combination of shapes, but I want to see a really clear rainbow. This is an okay one, you can get better. Okay, so you can either make a cylindrical lens following that link, or you can make a rainbow using the FET simulation and upload a screenshot of it. And if you really want to, and you can, you can try and make a real rainbow with light. That's quite tricky, but if you can, that'd be wonderful too. Or you can make a pinhole camera. Okay, now I've got a link here that's going to be in um, the description of the video and in your class charts to make a pinhole camera. Pinhole cameras are really easy to make. Okay, here's two examples that I made in about 15 minutes. This is just a toilet roll with a little bit of tissue paper on one end and some tin foil on the other end. I haven't even glued it, I've just kind of pushed it together. I put a tiny little hole, very small hole, in the end of the tin foil, and that's a pinhole camera. Done. Okay, now you'll need to experiment to see how, okay, so what's the best size of the pinhole? So now it's also going to be easier to see more detailed pictures if you use a bigger pinhole camera. So this is just a little box um, from my new microphone. Fancy microphone, fancy microphone, um, where I've got, where I cut a hole in one side and a bigger hole in the other side, and I've got tinfoil here with the pinhole, and on the other side, I've just got some um, baking paper, parchment, so baking paper, okay? Now, if I was in school, I'd use tracing paper. If you've got tracing paper, that's probably the best thing. Um, tinfoil works really well for your pinhole because you can reuse it, okay? And it stops the light going through. Now, when you're making it, and you've made it, you need something quite bright, quite bright to see, and you need to be in quite a dim area to actually see the picture, okay? So um, what I would suggest is once you've made it, get yourself into a dark room or wait until night time, and look at this picture of an arrow, okay, holding up your, your, um, your pinhole camera towards it, and change the distance between you and this picture of the arrow. And you can see how big it gets, how clear it is, and you can change the pinhole size. And once you're once you're more used to using the pinhole, then you can look at other things like outside your bedroom window. Okay? So those are your three options for your extension task, where you're either making a cylindrical lens, you're uploading a screenshot of a um, rainbow, or you're making a pinhole camera. Um, but your primary task is this, to draw that diagram showing refraction or, sorry, and, so picture of refraction and to do this quick little experiment looking at reflection using that FET simulation. Okay, so I hope you all have a well, lovely week. I hope everything's going well at home. Take care and goodbye.